Detroit, Detroit, dun, 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 dun. Remember that Frank Sinatra song? Oh, it was Chicago, Chicago. But I want to talk about a couple things. One of them is Detroit and unemployment. We'll get to that in a second. On my stress-free ride to work here. I hope I get it in one section here. XP is no longer supported on my computer, so I have no idea what's going to happen. It's like a mystery. But here we go. Now, Detroit... I know what people are, any, the one or two people that may watch this video are going to say, what the hell does a white cracker like you, living out here in the middle of nowhere, know about Detroit? A country boy from the hills. Yep, and that's true. That's why I grew up in the hills. The nearest town was like, you know, the nearest town had only like 500 people in it. So that's the biggest town that was nearby. So that's how rural this area was up in the mountains. Now, and then I went to, my family was kind of messed up. We sort of met in a place in Michigan near Detroit. I'm not going to say exact precisely where, but it was between Shaner and Ryan, one block north of 8 Mile. Yes, 8 Mile. The famous 8 Mile. And it's nothing like the Eminem movie. I can tell you that right now. But I came from the country, and now every experience one has in life, sort of you got to take that experience, whether it's negative or positive, immoral, moral, whatever, and dissect it and take the good stuff out, throw the bad stuff away, and that sort of builds your character and your foundation for your your philosophical, it's philosophical, excuse me, foundation. And hopefully, it's moral and just. Now, um, but I did live by Eight Mile for a few years, and uh, you know, the one thing we realized right away that this place is crazy. It back in those days, it was just insane crazy. That was the Coleman year. Coleman Young years, it, you know that's when they had the the best friends and the and the white boy Rick guy and all these murders and, and, and it was just like gangster town man it was crazy and every everybody was a gangster everybody had a scam going there was no jobs back in those days but the factories were pretty much humming because we had a couple slight recessions but you know because we had the factories and there were factories everywhere down there and they were just you could get a job but they didn't pay much same thing now. You know, low, low wage paying, no go nowhere jobs that, that you, you work your ass off and you, you basically gain nothing. They're really t tough jobs. So I don't know what the answer to the economy is, but anyway, um, now there's none. There's no factories down there that, that are actually working. They're all empty. They're all warehouses, furniture stores. There's nothing else down there. You know, not like it was. So the next time we have a really, really economic, really bad downturn, and there's no going to be hard to find an upturn when there's when there's less jobs than there is now and there's no jobs especially if you're an older worker this is where I work in my stress free ride to work here get out of the way dove damn birds are everywhere um, but Detroit is 18 billion dollars in debt okay they're going bankrupt everybody knows that and um, they've been having I mean finan financial issues but now recently what happened is it made national news again for Detroit besides the bankruptcy is that this guy was he uh, was driving down one of these roads that are really narrow because they never expanded them or did any work to improve them and this kid was standing by the curve and he he, he launched out because that's what you got to do down there man you got to launch out and try to run across the street because it's very tough to do that because like I said there's no been infrastructure repairs or improvements so it's old time shit it's Roads built for 30 miles an hour and cars going 50 miles an hour, and there's a lot more cars. But anyway, the kid gets hit. Thank God he's okay. But the guy stopped us, make sure he's okay. He's a white guy. And um, a mob of 100 people beat the hell out of him. And nobody said or stood up or did anything for him, beat the hell out of him, and robbed him, besides that. Now, the thing is, what's happening now in Detroit is it's become festering. I'm going to call it a festering boil because it's been a, a boil that's been kind of, you know how you get a, I never had a boil, but I guess if you get a boil, you know, like on your ass, and uh, it's festering, and it's just bubbling, and, and the bacteria is like you know, breeding, and it's just getting this pus rolls, this pus that's just forming, and, and it's starting pressure, and it's just painful. That's what's happening in Detroit right now. You know, it's, there, there's no, it has been no jobs, no jobs, and the crime is incredible. Now, this isn't the first time somebody, someone's been pulled from a car and beat down there. That's happened many times before. I was a contractor, and I did a lot of uh, work in these areas in Detroit, which I hated. But we knew what areas to avoid at what times a day. Mostly they were near high schools, because what would happen is if you were driving a, a contractor's truck, even if your doors were locked, you, if you were stopped at a stoplight, you would be mobbed on. They would break open your doors, take your tools. Let me tell you something. You don't want to get out of that van or that truck. You don't want to get out because they will put you in a coma like this guy. So people would be robbed. It was happening all the time. 
people would complain? Nothing. Nothing ever done about it. So this is not the first time somebody was dragged from a car. It would happen actually about a year ago in another area. Detroit dragged him out, beat the hell out of him. Check it out. It's, it's like about a year ago. So it ha business has been happening. But it's festering down there. You know, these people are very poor. The heroin has just saturated the area. Everybody's screwed up, man, on some kind of drugs. And mostly heroin down there. And that is just not a... Uh, you know, that's not going to add up to anything that's going to be good. Okay, that's going to make it worse. Now, there's not a lot of places to um, loot down there, and that's when people riot. They're, basically, there's a most of them are just looking for places to loot. So I, my guess is, I always said this, and I said this three years ago. I'm, I'm surprised there hasn't been anything, anything in Detroit before this, but I think that the um, the animosity the towards people that they think they view as the haves and, you know, the have-nots and between them or between the have-nots to the people they think that have and look they probably think I have something hell you wouldn't believe the low wages I make I don't even make average wages man but I love this job so you got to sacrifice but anyway um, um it's festering and pretty soon it's gonna boil the boil's gonna pop and this 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 uh, just toxic pus is gonna go everywhere and it's gonna spread like wildfire wildfire like this hundred people it's gonna be a mob mentality it's gonna be just burn everything, take to the streets, and they'll probably start with downtown Detroit, because that's where they've been doing, putting all the money and improving, you know, the Tiger Stadium, the new uh, football stadium, and a bunch of other projects, and uh, I think they'd probably start down there, and, you know, cause if they want to send a message, but I think this violence, oh, I mean, it's just one thing away, one accident, one, one mistake away, uh, the cops accidentally shoot somebody again, I mean, that's happened a couple times, too, and, and they, they're lucky it didn't boil over. But my nice thoughts on Detroit, $18 billion in debt, they're going bankrupt. Look, they don't have any money. There's talk about them getting $120 million here and $150 million there from this project or the government. But you know something? In, if you look at it, $120 million, you know, $150 million, $300 million, look, they're, they're $18 billion in debt. $18 billion. And, you know, that's, that's $1,000 that's million, you know? And there's 18 of them, 18,000 millions. Now, I, I don't know, man. 350 million, what is that really even going to do to anything? They're saying it may keep the lights on for a couple months. But they're selling out. They're selling out the the, uh, um, the uh, water department, like I said they would. And that's about all they have that makes money down there. And that's about it. Maybe one of those trash re, uh, pickup things, they'll privatize that, sell it to a foreign company, one of these banks that will own it driving the ground because they don't care you know they have no um you know personal uh, interest in any of that you know they don't live here and that's what's gonna happen but i just wanted to mention that about detroit on my stress-free ride to work here and uh, yeah thank god i'm away from eight mile i never go down there anymore um only when i had to work because i got out of there the hell is the fast as I mean, as fast as i could it's a crazy insane place and it's crazy insane times 100 now since the time that i was there it stuck out